Hello folks, today I'm gonna make a kind of quick video about acquiring the rook, selecting your parts, print settings, and then some tips and tricks to get you going, including where to find mods. So let's start from the beginning. You wanna build a rook. Great, thank you. The first thing that you would need is the rook files and you can follow those on printables uh, we have everything that you would need to build a rook on this sing single page for uh, from Rolahan. there is a nice description it's a 3d three, three printed frame core xy belted z boron bud and it also has some guides to the, um, the print guide the bill of materials and Rolahan's video list that he has done when he made the first rook. As you can see, there are a bunch of files. There's not too many, considering you're printing an entire printer. So um, I'll guide you through that. So. Some of you might be here because of the other version of the Rook, the Rook 2020. And you can also find that on printables. And this is the Rook 2020. This is the aluminum extrusion version of the Rook. It uses less plastic, less printed parts, but also does need an aluminum extrusion frame. And you can find all the info about this here. So where can you find all the files? Because these are not all the files. The Rook and the Rook 2020 were both made with modding in mind. They are specifically designed to be as minimum as possible to give you the benefits of all the great mods that are out there. There are some fantastic mods to both the Rook Mark 1 and the Rook 2020. And they are also found on Rolahan's printables site in his collections. So you can see that you have your official Rook mods, your official Rook Evo mod, and your official Rook 2020 mods. So if we click the official Rook 20, uh, Rook mods, we can see that there's a whole bunch of different mods available. And I'm, I'm just going to note that there are still a few mods that are still only on the Discord that has not been transferred to the printable, so it might be worth your while to have a glance in the uh, Rook Discord mods channel and see if you can find something that you like. And also, if you have a mod, please let us know in the Discord and we will add this, them to your to the collection. Okay, so now you have your files and you want to start printing. How do we set up our printer to get the best prints possible for the Rook? And if we go to the uh, printables page for the Rook Mark 1, we can see in the details that there's a guide on printing the Rook. And we have made a um, simple guide it's not super detailed but it doesn't need to be because the printing the rook is a fairly straightforward process so i'm just gonna give you the notes and then you can have a look at yourself in this printing guide so <clears throat> i do recommend calibrating your printer follow these links if you have not done that you need a finely tuned printer that makes good prints to be able to print the rook uh, I do recommend the rod clearance tests on our github it does have a small block that you can print out and test with your rods as that is the most important thing to get right but do not change the scale of your prints change your uh, flow in your slicer 
to get the best results. So you can change your flow just slightly to make your the prints the best. So filament selection, this is a hot topic and I do stand by my statements that Rook is best printed in PLA plus. It's the stiffest plastic and it's easier to print than most other plastics considering that the frame is on an entire print bed on an Ender 3. Uh, ABS or ASA might be hard for some people to get right and also ABS and ASA are not as stiff as PLA. Uh, I do not recommend PETG simply because it does not have the same stiffness and it tends to flex. If you can, I would use a heated chamber or a just an enclosure printer. If you do not have that, the simple way to do that is put a cardboard box over it, cover it with a plastic tote or even a plastic bag, even a blanket. Just make sure that the blanket does not touch the printer. It might catch on fire, so keep an eye on that. So print settings. I get a lot of questions about the print settings for the Rook. And um, I've made two different setups for a 0.4 and a 0.6 nozzle. These have been tested again and again. I printed all my Rook parts with the exact same settings. So this is what I recommend. I've never had a failed part with these settings. and. Um, some people might wonder why only 15% infill. There are reasons for that. You don't need to have more. That's the simple. At that point, you're just wasting your filament. I do recommend a brim. It does help with getting a nice first layer and to prevent uh, lifting. Glue stick. Glue stick. Uh, hairspray or any other ha adhesive is recommended. Uh, infill rectilinear honeycomb, something that has straights, um, it makes it quicker to print. Avoid gyroid, um, it does take a lot longer to print. Temperature, it does vary on your filament and on your printer. So do make a temperature tower and check the uh, strongest part of your temperature tower to get the best results. So for the stock Rook parts, you only need one of each file except the feet because you need four of those and then the hot end parts and these are part dependent if you have different hot ends, you might need a mod or something to, add, to address that to make it fit your needs. And then finally, the print orientation. This is the way I like to do it. This is what gives me the best results. Um, please note that in Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer, the uh, set setups might be a slightly different and print times might be slightly different. Um, choose whatever slicer that you like. So top and bottom frame are simple. Uh, just keep in mind that your top frame should be printed upside down, meaning these hex holes for the nuts should be up. Gives a better results and also makes your top look better in the end. Your motor mounts. These are the most important part to get perfect. So slow your printer down, print slightly sl slower than you normally would to get a better layer adhesion. Maybe reduce your cooling to get even better layer adhesion. And then finally, the idlers and the feet. These are the two parts that have slightly different setups. So you could print the idlers like this works just fine. Only thing is that I don't like the look of the flat face when everything else is printed uh, in the, the other direction. So I would do this. It does give a better result. 
uh, also they tend to crack less um, so it does help on the end result for your parts so in super slicer I would do this Prusa slicer now has the organics uh, supports so I would enable that and just like Kira would do he would give a really good result with this feet you need four of those these remember there are a supportless version of this on Gulsifer's printables. I do recommend those. And that's it. That's all you need to know for getting your parts and then orientating and printing. So I'll just quickly go through one part with my Super Slicer <coughs> profile. Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer are the same thing. Uh, they have the same settings, slightly different uh, placement for the settings. And Cura has all the same settings, but they're called slightly different things. So you might need to have a look at what your settings are called. So let's start with a motor mount. Should be an easy part. <clears throat> and as you can see, that would not make a good print. So let's go back and reference the print guide. And let's scroll up to see the motor mount. And there we have it. So the motor mounts are supposed to be printed face down. So let's go back to Super Slicer and orient it. So there we go. That should be ready for printing. Now let's go through our settings for my printer. And remember, this is an Ender 3 V2. That does have some mods to make it slightly faster. So I do three perimeters, top and bottom four solids. And the rest are pretty much a stock Ender 3 setup. course 0.25 layer height and 50% rectilinear infill this is what gives me the best prints and also it's the fastest way to print I do like to use the combined infill it does save some time I have not noticed a difference between a frame without and with this setting so to save some filament and some time, use combine infill, infill every two layers. It does help your prints. And this one is important with and flow. I would recommend you increase your flow depending on your nozzle. So if for a 0.4 nozzle, do a 0 0.05 increase to a 0.45 layer width. This will just give you a slightly better adhesion. And with a 0.6, I would go to 0.7 to give you the same results. So that is it. Let's do some printing and I'll see you in the next video.